Hello there, my name is Richard. The first time you see my channel, I used to review cartoon series, anime series, so something completely random. And today we'll talk about season one of Human Research. This anime series is basically a spin off of the original Big Mouth. Of course, if you didn't like Big Mouth, I kind of recommend watch a Human Research because I feel they improve a lot of ideas they wanted to do, but they really couldn't do it on Big Mouth. Yeah, I'm glad they do that because I'm the type of person who really did not like Big Mouth. Not because of the story, it's because I didn't like the character designs and the voice actors, specifically the main two main leads. And I'm just it doesn't really fit them in a way. If I have best way to describe this, the only true reason I could never see it. It just two things sort of find your attention and like which is worse, the voice act they chose or the designs. And that's the thing I could never actually go into it. It's something I really don't like, but I have to kind of respect because they know what they're doing on Big Mouth. But you just mean you have the same problem watching Big Mouth. This is the reason I recommend uh, Human Research. Human Research specifically focus on the monsters who help the children and the adult, how they decide sort of things. But a little bit, they sort of chose a very interesting way to present this, almost like an office sort of anime series. But a little bit, it goes even deeper than this. It's not the obvious, not besides the issues that each monster has. It's almost asking that question, what are their purpose? What if that purpose doesn't really work for them? And that is sort of interesting because they play a lot of different ideas. Like, I think one of the biggest examples is Emmy, the love bug, who supposed to be an assistant to her main boss. But at the very end, she sucks at it because she's not really interesting to actually do the job right. She's kind of selfish. But somehow her boss got fired for a certain apparent reason we don't know to the very end. But it's not sort of a mystery. It was only focus, it was more like focusing on like, oh, she got fired, you have rumors, but she would tell you when she's good and ready. You just focus on aiming her situation, like, why am I doing this job for? I want this job or because I am a love bug. That's my main purpose. That's what I do. Help other people find the love, find that sort of common ground to love something. And I love it that em Emmy is not a really good at it. Not because she doesn't want to, she doesn't know how. In fact, she has sort of excuses that sort of kind of, I'm not sure what I'm doing, maybe I'm the wrong person. And they point out you're never ready. You need to go in and fail to get better. And that's the whole point of being a love bug. But I love it even more. They play with the idea of each monster. What if if the monster can actually see the human and this human can see you. But the difference is it's not the specific person you got hired to help. This random stranger can't see you. What's wrong with this? This is right? This is not not right? Yeah, you know, lucky they serve kinda play with those kind of answers and questions because they show you this is the reason why humans and monsters can be together because their vibe and the humans needs are sort of crossing the wrong way. It's like you don't mix for a reason because you mess with the humans and the human mess with the monsters. It just doesn't work because your chemistry it just can't actually drive you crazy or even kill you. Yeah, I love that they sort of explore that. You also explore what the job really means to the characters. And that is just super great because this series does go deep. Of course, this over exaggerated, a lot of sexual jokes, a lot of pew horn humor, but I love it, they never really lose their focus. They focus on the relationships, what this job means, what my best friends actually mean to me. And I, I'm doing the right thing. And all these questions make this world sort of interesting, especially understanding the main goal. I should help this person. But I love it even more if asked another question that what if this person dies? What happened to the monster? Well, he got reassigned, but you get too attached to it. Can you actually drag you with the human and die? Or go suicide or crazy? Yeah, I love that kind of stuff. That's sort of forbidden, but you're not sure what will happen, but you have a sort of idea. You know, have sort of rules. We should follow it or not. 
why we intruded the fire rules, and that's just great. This is the reason I enjoy it so much. If that's sort of interesting, fascinating, and deep, but at the same time, everybody's sort of a monster, sort of a allegory of sexuality, allegory of common sense, allegory of you try to be up the boss, but you sure you're not that greedy. I love that sort of duality. Each character is just super great. And that's the thing, it just sort of grabs me. They did it so well. But the whole run of everything is Emmy because Emmy is the type of person who is self lovely, selfish, a bitch, but a little bit she is very relatable and very likable. Not like Bender, it's more like what you do in that sort of situation, what you do your best friend steals or dates your ex-boyfriend. But once more, more sort of understanding her side and understanding her best friend's side. And I love it that sort of makes sense. Like nobody here is the wrong. It just sort of naturally happens. And that is something sort of incredible and hard to do. You can see so many shows trying to do that simple thing and fail because it's sort of hard to make the one of the main leads unlikable but still liked. And a little bit more, they sort of explore the other monsters, what they do, their relationships. I think one of the best examples is Morney and Connie. You see them in the original show, now they're back here, but you actually explore their relationship, how they actually work, what doesn't work together, and you feel that sort of interesting, kind of weird relation they have. They don't want to be committed in a relationship, but they kind of want to, but then don't know how to. And they're even afraid to say, I love you to each other, but it find it more fascinating if someone said I love you to a different person who are their best friend, the other one get jealous like why you don't say the L to me? If I do, I'm afraid this love relationship will fail. But once more, each character is just fully understood and grasp what they are. None of them are completely one noted. They all are completely full characters. And I assure you, none of them are un unlikable. I mean, some of them, they're meant to be unlikable. I think one of the big examples is sir, this angel that is basically an addiction monster who is just super handsome, super gorgeous. He could charm anyone. But Lovey, he's an asshole, but he knows he's an asshole. He doesn't want to play with people's feelings that much. But at the same time, he's abused his special ability to get his way. But Lovey is sort of complicated, that character. Yeah, I just, I kind of enjoy that. I love it. Each character has this sort of charm, this certain place to win you over. It's a, basically the best describing this show is sort of hard to hate. The only complaint I actually have is basically the first three episodes kind of struggle how to tell the story. The first episode was great, the second episode was okay but still good, and the third episode finally understood what need to do and fully accomplish it. Now that's the only major complaint I have. One minor complaint is the human people, but once more I just don't like the designs. They're just super unlikable designs like it's like ask a lot of questions why they chose those designs but at the same time it sort of make makes sense because this is sort of a very sexual awkward real waking of a person so it makes sense so really ugly designs match the storyline what you're trying to do but it's sort of unexcusable if the designs are not well balanced and that's the only problem but luckily for at least for me the human designs or human people are only there for a few minutes just to sort of help to see what the human uh, monsters do with the humans, how they coach them to do the right choice. And that's probably the only minor complaint I have. Anything else, it's all gold. But of course, this is a type of show if you are interested or not interested, I still give it a recommendation. Watch at least three episodes. Now I have one question. How do you love this spin off? Are you a fan of the big one? If you like this version, you didn't, you just, you just, just like me, you just love this version, but you don't like the original series, tell me down below, let me know. I really got nothing else to say. Got only thing, one thing is thank you for watching, don't forget to subscribe, and have a wonderful day. Bye.